When trouble come your way, everybody run away. When money come your way, everybody busy body. Now you are what they your head, everybody Ben Johnson. Them they deny, them don't know you again. Them go deny, them don't know you again, oh. Them go deny, them don't know you again. I say them deny, them don't know you again, oh. Them go deny, them don't know you again. <laughs> Yes, so my Niger people, welcome back to the channel. I remain your host for life, Niger boy. <laughs> so, um, this gentleman with his cybercrime operations had about 1.9 million victims uh, of his of his uh, phishing rings, and also, um, I mean, his uh, illegal illegal stealing basically amounted to almost half a billion dollars. Hi guys, welcome to Niger Boys TV. Yeah. <laughs> people welcome back to the channel i remain your host for life Niger boy <laughs> like you all know according to the bible there's no small lie and there's no big lie if you tell a small lie or you tell a big lie you will end up in the lake of fire in the lake of fire falling with flying stones huh? and all liars will be cast into the lake of fire that is what the bible tells us so whatever you do in life Mm? No matter what you do in life, right? However you live your life, one way or the other, you're going to trample on people. You're going to step on toes. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to play people. Maybe you might, maybe you might end up cheating on people. You might steal people's money. You might do fraud. Yahoo, Yahoo. Do rituals. Kill people. Uh, what's it called? Uh, kidnap people. And then people die in the process. Rob a bank. Kill people and stuff like that. One way or the other, you're going to commit a sin. So let's say you somebody lent you money, for example. Hmm? Somebody lent you money. You took the money and then you ran away. And that money kind of, you know, help you to attain a better height. You now got to a point where you're comfortable. You're not losing. You know, you're, you're enjoying life. But that person is still crying. That person is still dying silently. If you still have your humanity in you, if you still got a conscience in you, you now say, ah, you know what? I think I need to go and make peace with this person. You call them on the phone and say, hi, hi, look, sorry, I'm very, very sorry. I know I took your money. I've still got your money. In fact, I'm going to pay your money back with interest. I'll pay your money back today. I'm ready to pay you with interest. That person will be very, very happy. Very, very happy. Regardless of all the inconveniences, but they want their money back. So you give them back their money. They forgive you. Your peace is now with the person and with God. So you're, you're forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. But let's say you're into Yahoo Yahoo Plus or into ritualist, into, into you're a ritualist or something like that. You kill somebody or you take a, a, a female a female private, uh, what's it called? Uh, a female pants or what they, what they call it, like a, a, fi, a girl's private underwear. Yeah, let me call it private underwear. I don't, I've never used that word before. So let's say you take a girl's private on the way and you do yahoo yahoo with it. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the girl now runs mad and then she dies in the process. That money you have made through yahoo yahoo, you now, uh, it now lifted you up. You now become very, very comfortable in life. You have everything you need. You're happy. But don't forget, the more you're much, you're getting matured. Your brain is still intact. You'll be remembering what you've done, how you've made that money. You'll keep remembering how you made that money. So, how do you make peace with God? Because you know your soul is still with the devil. How do you make peace with God? Can you contact the girl? Or let's say you rob the bank and kill a lot of people. Can you contact those people and make peace with them? The answer is no. So, no matter what you do in that situation, your life your soul is in the hand of the devil and you will rot in hell. Simple and short. 
So let's come back to uh, why I'm making this video today. It's about Hush Puppy. A lot of you watch Hush Puppy on Instagram or YouTube or wherever you watch Hush Puppy from. I don't know why, what your intention is, I mean, when you're watching his videos, because he has, he has a lot of followers. Why are you following Hush Puppy? Are you following Hush Puppy because you hate him? Or are you following Hush Puppy because you like him? Or are you following Hush Puppy because he inspires you in a way? Or are you following Hush Puppy because he's impacting your life? One way or the other, that's why you're following Hush Puppy, right? Well, let me tell you what I know about myself. Hmm? Every time I watch Hush Puppy's video, what I what I what I oh, I don't know how to put this. Every time I watch Hush Puppy's video, yeah, I don't get carried away by his wealth. I don't get carried away by the display of his cash or wealth or something like that. What I'm more interested in is his story. The story behind his wealth. Even though he wasn't telling anybody about how he made his money, which is private for him. He doesn't need to tell anybody how he, how he makes his money. Keep your, 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 your business to yourself. Fine. But he, he encourages people. He tells the young guys that, look, double your hustle. Don't give up in whatever you do. Hmm? As for me, I never thought Hush Puppy was into fraud. I never believed Hush Puppy was into fraud. To be very honest with you guys, I was never ever in any doubt that Hush Puppy's world was illegal. Because for him to come out with confidence and say, yes, he bought Tia Roba. This guy buy Tia Roba, Bentley, Tia the Roba. And I was looking at him saying, wow, this is great. I was wishing my life could be like that. That's my dream that one day, God, please let my own world reach my hand like this. You know, do you know what it means to drive a brand new car? I don't think you know. <laughs> I don't think you know. So, Hush Puppy, every time he comes out and he starts advising people, telling us that his parents were very, very poor, his sister died of, uh, of malaria, all those kind of things, that amongst all his generations, he's the only one, the only one person that made it to limelight. And I kept wondering, say, ah, what did this guy do? How did he make all this money? Has he got a private oil block somewhere that we don't know about? Hmm. But then what came into my mind was this, yeah? I have this friend that was always telling me about this uh, Bitcoin. He said, Nigeria boy, go and invest in Bitcoin, invest in Bitcoin, invest in Bitcoin. So I felt, ah, Bitcoin. Hmm. So the first thing I did, the very first day I watched uh, Hush Poppy and saw his stories and stuff, yeah? The first thing I did was, I went into my bank account, took out some money that I know if I lose this money in any way, because I don't like gambling, I don't gamble, right? So I felt if I lose this money in any way, I won't be affected. So I used those money, I used those cash here yeah, to invest on Bitcoin. As I speak to you right now, the money is still there. It kept going up and down, up and down, fluctuating up and down, up and down. So I don't know, I just left it. And maybe one day God will bless me from that place and I'll start showcasing my own wealth. That's how it is. It's a good thing to show, showcase your it's a blessing for you to showcase your wealth. As long as you got your money in the, the right way where you don't have to look over your shoulders like ah FBI telling you, ah FBI telling you, eh, now I know they make your money the right way and you'll be happy. Make peace with the people you offended and you'll be happy. Your soul will be free. Okay, so before we judge Hodge Poppy. Let me show you guys, I want to prove to you guys today that in Nigeria, all our politicians are hush puppies. <laughs> all our politicians, yeah, are hush puppies. You see, every time hush puppy comes and displays his wealth, I am never jealous of hush puppy. Never. Up to today, I will never ever be jealous of hush puppy. Never. But every time a person, a guy like Dino Milai, will come out and start flashing or showcasing his wealth, Honestly, it pains me. It pains me because according to Fela, these are called uh, authority stealing with pen. Pen stealing. Because the Nigerian government have legally scammed Nigerians. They legally scammed us. They created laws that apportioned larger part of the wealth to themselves and that the Nigerian people don't have a single job. People don't get paid. 
Take a look at this. A video of highway street sweepers of the Lagos State Waste Management Authority protesting against unpaid salaries has gone viral. In the video, the street sweepers were seen dumping their jumpsuits and saying they would no longer work until the government paid them. Let's take a look. As you can see in that video, it's a scam. How can people be working for you? A whole government, your subjects are working for you and you don't pay them. What do you expect them to deal on? How do you expect them to live? You know, since the time we have this coronavirus in Nigeria, when the government could not provide a single palliative to the people, apart from all those video, 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 video palliative, yeah? That's when I knew that Nigerian government can never ever help anybody. They will never ever help anybody. Never. They will never help anybody. So now coming back to this uh, EFCC chairman, Magu. Hmm? Simple question that is put to Ibrahim Magu. Ibrahim Magu. Simple question. Now listen to his answer. Take a look. The EFCC chairman is with us. Mr. Ibrahim Mustafa Mago, thank you for joining us. Hello. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yes. You have been in charge of EFCC for about it's five so years. For about five years now. Will you say Nigeria is winning the war against corruption? Well, uh, that, that, will, uh, that will amount to um, um, kind of um, assessing myself and, and other anti-corruption agencies. But, but uh, you agree with me that I, I think I saw Mr. Watitoji was there. It, 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 it is much, much better now than in, the, in those days. I mean, uh, you, you just told me that a lot of the journalists run abroad and they were sleeping in one fallow in New York, for instance. So, so now there is, um, everybody can express themselves and um, there, there is no longer impunity. I mean, if, I mean, yeah, people don't do the way they like and there is this fear of a sanction. Uh, and, and. Does that answer the question? In any way, does that answer the question no, nobody is asking you that question. <laughs> now take a look at this. That's not all. Take a look at this. Let's, let's talk specifically. Let's talk specifically about your work. Your work as chairman of the EFCC. Um, recently, the Supreme Court gave a verdict directing the EFCC to go back and retry former governor of Abia State. Or Jews or Kalu, how do you re, uh, react to this kind of judgment, this kind of setback? How do you react? No, no, it's, it's discouraging. It's frustrating, you know. But 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 all the same, we the the uh, Supreme Court has given uh, the judgment, and and we are very much on course. Uh, everything is being done. Uh, to to comply uh, with the judgment of the Supreme Court. Uh, you agree with me that the Supreme Court did not um, condemn our, our evidence. Evidence rendered and uh, uh, witnesses, uh, they didn't say uh, and nobody um, uh, uh, condemned any of these things. So we are very much on course. We will comply with the, uh, the judgment of the, of the Supreme Court and... Uh, and we are on course already. We are going back to the to the court and uh, retry again, uh, just in line with the judicial directives. So as you guys can see, right, all these uh, Buhari appointments, they have all learned from Buhari because Buhari likes to read scripts, written scripts, you know, programs that are already laid down for him to read. As you can see in the video, right, he is never easy. He's always, you know, afraid. His hands are shaking. He's not comfortable in the seat. 
He wants, he gives, he tries to, he doesn't know how to give them signal for him to understand, for them to understand and just, you know, ease the questions. He's always like, he's so comfortable. Listen, in an interview, if you want to, there, there's a difference between a dialogue, hmm, an interview, hmm, and uh, a press, holding a press conference. There's a difference. If somebody invites you for an interview, right, you have to be the one to listen. They will ask you a question, you listen, think, and then talk, answer. Okay? You think, and then you talk, and then you wait for the next question. You don't go to a job interview and start to interview and, and start asking your employer, the person, your future employer, you're asking him questions. Where does that happen? No way. But these guys, they will just, they, they will try their best way to avoid whatever you're about to say. Why can't you inform Nigerians? Tell us what we want to know. We are Nigerians. Nigeria is the only country in the world where things like this can happen. In the whole world, I tell you the truth. So, like you guys all know now, the reason why Buhari is avoiding interview, why all these politicians are, avo are avoiding interview, hmm? I now know the reason why all these politicians are avoiding interviews. I know the very reason why they are all avoiding interviews. <laughs> now, see, they've all learned their mistakes from this man. What is the website of the NSCDC? What is the website of the NSCD? What is the what is the website of the NSCDC? What is the website of the NSCDC? The website of NSCD NSCDC. 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 I cannot calibrically I cannot I cannot calibrically tell you I cannot calibrically I cannot I cannot calibrically tell you what is good is going to remain known by 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 my oga at the top my oga my oga at the top wait my oga at the top my oga my oga at the top that's all my <laughs> you remember those two men so that's why if they invite them now to come to the studio and you know grant an interview they will choose not to go to the studio. Rather, they will stay in their own office. Like Magu now. Magu, you can see that he's inside the EFCC office. Okay, okay. The, the EFCC has been pre um, prosecuting um, some politically exposed, you know, individuals since 2007. But you've not been having conv um, conviction. So what, what really is really, what is really going on, you know? Why are we not having the number of conviction Especially amongst the, those, those governors. Those governors. Those people. Okay, let, let, let me quickly say that um, the EFCC is uh, one, one law enforcement agency that, uh, that they really prosecute the, our, uh, our suspect. Uh, and and we, we don't go to customary court, neither do we go to magistrate court. No, our well, cases go to high court, either state high court, or federal high court, or the court of appeal, or the Supreme Court. Now, if, if you go to all these courts, high court, state, federal high court, court of appeal, Supreme, we are the, the law enforcement, the only law enforcement agency in this country that has the highest number of cases pending. It did not go to the studio so that he can have his laid down, written documents down, and then start to read. Whatever they ask him, he'll pretend like his microphone is not working well, like the earphone is not working, the earpiece is not working, you know? And then he starts answering his own, the, uh, tell us what he thinks we want to know, what he, he wants us to know, that's, that's what he's saying. But then when, what we asked him, he's not giving us any answers at all. And these are the people that lead us. These are the people that will take us to the next level. <laughs> my brother, we are not going anywhere until we break that country. We need qualified people, hmm? real qualified people with good credentials to head that country for now before it breaks up. For now. So guys, this is where I'm going to draw the curtain. I hope to see you guys in the next one. For now, peace and God bless you all. Love you.